All right. Welcome to today's uh, next level session here at Inside Real Estate. We are here in March already, which means, I guess, in theory, the market should be getting in the full swing for the spring, right? Hopefully. Um, you guys getting a little busier? Go ahead and comment. Let me know. If you're getting busier. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, uh, definitely like this video and subscribe to the channel and do all the things that the kids say to do, like smash the like button and all that stuff. Um, you will be notified whenever we go live or whenever we post new videos to YouTube. So there is some benefit in that. These sessions are accessible, the live links to them from the top right of your KV Core uh, dashboard. So you can view our live training calendar and access these sessions, as well as our basic quick start, which rolls fresh every week. So if you need the basics KV Core, uh, any week you can jump on Monday through, thir Monday through Thursday and kind of get the goods from our awesome training team. And then uh, I come and, and uh, mess up their polish with these sessions an hour later, and we just go wacky with the next level experimental uh, stuff from time to time. So uh, today's topic continuing off of yesterday was uh, retargeting. And I've set up this week a little bit of a test to be kind of the rolling theme. We're going to do this in parts, and then we'll get into your Q&A uh, after we do a little bit more on retargeting. And today, I was hoping to jump into audience creation on Facebook and Google. So once we've got our scripts installed as we did yesterday, the next step is going to be to start to define some audiences or at the very least kind of understand what's available moving forward. You don't have to do everything I'm about to show um, today, um, but just put it in the back of your head is like, okay, this is, these are different ways that I might retarget um, and the different ways that I can create audiences to retarget to. So um, let's start with Facebook. I'm going to hop into a Facebook account here. And show of hands, just to try to get you guys to participate a little, did anybody get your retargeting uh, scripts installed yesterday? Would love to hear if you had ran into any issues with that or not. Um, I do know that the platforms can be a little different than what I show on the screen as mentioned yesterday. So if you ran into any uh, issues, do let, do let me know. Um, so we're in here in our Facebook dashboard again, and we're clicking on our little hamburger friend for the navigation. And I'm gonna go to audiences now. So this is going to be the next step in setting up a retargeting campaign. We're going to go to audiences. Now, if it's not up in the top section here, then you should see it down here under where it says advertise. And then you'll see another item for audiences. So right there. Uh, Crystal, if you guys weren't on yesterday, all our replays are at insiderealestate.com slash webinars. And you can, you can kind of see uh, what we did there. Uh, what we talked about in yesterday's video was how to install the retargeting scripts which are available, they're unique to you from the ad platform. So they weren't scripts to, uh, to talk to somebody, but I can see how you would, you'd get that impression. They're, they're, maybe we will create some actual scripts for the ad copy tomorrow. <laughs> All right, so, um, so audience is right here. We're gonna click into that page and we're gonna enter a world of fun with Facebook. So, um, and you can, guys can kind of see that I've already created some. Some we've used, some are just, I've created for demo here. Um, but let's click the blue button and start to explore what we can do. So I'm first going to go through each of these sections. We're going to go through custom. We'll talk a little bit about lookalikes, but let's go to custom audience right here. And you'll see that we have a handful of options uh, that we can focus on. So the ones that we're going to cover today, we're going to do the website, the customer list option, the video, and the lead form are probably good enough. I've actually never played with the Instagram, so maybe we'll play with that too. So let's start with website right here. Uh, Christian, there are no, I, we usually don't announce the topics ahead of time, um, except for just on these sessions from day to day, we might talk about what's coming up. Uh, I may start to, in the calendar, put uh, topics in, in the actual calendar, but haven't gotten to that yet, but that's a good thought. But right now they're not published anymore. So I've chosen website for audience right here. And then it's going to ask us the source. It's just going to be our pixel. So you, you probably don't have multiple pixels, but just in case you do, you would pick which pixel you're relating this to. And this will start to give you an idea as we walk through here, guys, the, the kind of things you can do. So you can see the event here. And we have the option. We can choose all website visitors. And we can choose a duration for which they remain on our audience. So what we're doing here is we're saying, hey, Facebook, Anybody who visits this website where this pixel is installed, anytime the pixel fires, I want you to put those people on this audience for this duration, 180 days. And then I might name this um, Ryan's KB Core site, All Visitors. 
and then we can create that audience. So that's kind of the simplest right there of a website type of audience. Now let's go and create another audience the same way. So we'll choose website again. And you can actually get more granular here. This is where it gets, gets fun. So you can go and you can do people who visited specific web pages. So let's say I want to run a retargeting ad only to people who visit my sell page. So if they came to my site and they went to sell.php to get their home value, I can actually create an audience that's only those visitors. And the way that I do that is by using some identifier in the URL up here. So in this case, I'm going to grab a string out of the URL. It'll be sell.php. I could paste the whole thing. And I'll come back here and I'll say, hey, I want the URL contains sell.php. So what this is telling Facebook is, hey, anytime somebody is on a, a page on my website and includes sell.php, I want these people added to my audience. Okay. So, um, and you can also, this, these, these refinements I've never played with, you guys can play with those. It seems that you can actually only target iOS or Android people who are on that page, which might be a little overkill, but that's interesting. I've never noticed that before. Uh, so anybody who visits sell.php, and I might do Ryan's KB Core site visited sell page. So now what Facebook will do is anytime somebody visits that page, they'll then add them to that audience. And I'll be able to later go and choose that audience to run the ads to. So we're going to keep kind of just walking through a few examples here and just chat in guys if I'm moving too fast or you have questions about any of these options. So we had all website visitors, people who visited specific web pages. Um, I do want to show uh, does not contain as well. So you can actually create audiences based on and say, hey, uh, only if they're not on this page, if that makes sense. So maybe I want to exclude people who are on that sell link would be an example of that. So just keep that in mind. And you can kind of combine your audiences with logic inside of as you're running the ads, um, which I'll show you a, a peek at in a minute. You know how this all kind of ties together to running an ad. So you can do website-based retargeting based on the URL, based on your whole site. And then the last thing I'll show, uh, and this one's interesting. I actually do use this one uh, here and there. Um, visitors by time spent. And what's really cool about this is you can choose the top percentiles of people on your site who, it stands to reason, are the most engaged. So say I chose uh, the top 5% of people who are actively searching on my site. It, it, it stands to reason with a real estate website that those top 5%, they're probably coming back every day because they're getting alerts and they're looking at more properties, right? So those are probably our best leads um, who we might want to show an ad to. Uh, even the top 25 or 10 are probably relevant. But let's just say I want to do the top 5%, I want them to stay on this audience uh, for about seven days and then fall off. And then uh, we'll call those Brian's KB Core website, top 5%, like that, create audience. Now you can name this whatever you want. I keep saying my KB Core website just so I know because we're running multiple uh, age, you know, things out of this account, but you can always just say top 5% if it's only you. So then I'll create that audience. Now, as we create these, you'll notice it says uh, pending. It does take Facebook a little while to start uh, showing a number right here. So don't worry about what number they show here. Uh, you can see, let's see if I can find, here's a good example of an audience that we've used a lot. These are our waterfront lead form openers. And I'll show you the lead form thing in a second. Uh, but these are people who have opened the lead form on Facebook and there's been 1,600, 1,900 of those. So you start to get an idea of how many are on the website. So Crystal's asking, it's a good question. Can you use this on websites that they visit outside of our own? Uh, this would be for any website that you're able to install the Facebook pixel on. So the first step, as we talked about yesterday, you got to get that pixel on, on the website. So you could not own the site, but somehow sneak your pixel on there <laughs> and then you'd be able to do it. But, but for the most part, no, right? Because you have to own the website. So yeah, um, I do have some dirty marketer uh, ways to do that, but it's pretty dirty stuff. There, there's, there are traffic networks out there that will kind of let you target specific websites. Um, it, uh, traffic Dance, I think they changed their name, but it's, it's the CD, CD traffic world, which in, in real estate, since we're so hyper-local, it'd be hard to get a lot of traffic on those sites. Um, now, um, maybe I'll show you guys in a minute 
we can get into Google on, on Google's ad network, you can kind of target specific YouTube channels and people who are visiting specific websites, I think, like people who are on Zillow, for example, if they are using the Google ad network right now, you might be able to target people on their site. That's a little different. All right, tangent. So, um, so those are the website audiences. That was kind of our first step. Let's click custom audience again, right here. And then the second option is gonna be the customer list. So we'll read Facebook's definition, create an audience by uploading a list of customers who've interacted with your business. Information is list just hashed into an analyze code before it reaches Facebook. Uh, what they're trying to say is, uh, we, don't, we don't really know. <laughs> You're not giving us your co contact data, but you know, I don't know. Uh, do we trust them? <laughs> but anyway, you have the ability uh, with Facebook to upload an existing list of people that you have. So it could be past clients, Maybe you do an export from KV Core, right? So you can do that as long as you can export all of your leads, right? Not company-owned leads, but you can come in here to the Smart CRM and you can say, okay, I'd like to export all my people in past client status. Just to give an example, I'll do a filter and they're in my closed status and they're in my sphere, call them both of those. And I'll apply my filters. And I think that we can export just this lead set right here. So I can kind of check everybody off. And then I can go to export contacts like that, All right? And then it would grab those 170, in this case, email me the export. Well, what I can then do is I can take that export and I upload it here as a file. So you'll see Facebook says, hey, we need at least one main identifier. So as long as you have an email, a phone, um, a Facebook page user ID, that's interesting. And then first and last name, and then uh, if you have other information such as their address and where they are, that's great. You can include that um, there. And then you're gonna upload the file. Now, does your list include a custom column for customer value? You can get really granular here uh, if you're operating on a really big scale. Say you're, uh, you've got multiple branch offices um, and you know like the transaction value of the person, but you would need to feed Facebook a lot of data on that. So you'd need probably thousands of, transactions for this to be relevant. So in most cases, we're just going to choose no for the customer value. Uh, Facebook can use this to kind of know who's higher value to you and try to find people who are similar and things like that. But we're just going to click no. And then here you'll just upload your file. So I don't really have any example files. Yeah, I do actually. I have a thanks that I owe list that I, so we'll just do it as a, just to show an example here. And you can see it does a pretty good job. It found the email, the phone, the country, the phone number, and it kind of is mapping all these together. And you click import and create. And what Facebook will try to do is it'll try to find the email addresses that you gave them or the phone numbers and they'll match it up against known Facebook users and they'll create you an audience of those people. Um, and I think the last I heard, the, the match rate is around 50%. It's, it's never going to, or it's never going to be more than 50%. It's not 100, that's for sure, right? So, but you will get some percentage of people and then they'll be on a Facebook list. Uh, Patricia, I think you can. So uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Chris is asking if you can create an audience for people who like the Facebook page. I think you can. Um, let's check. I, I think you could directly target them with ads too, if I remember right. So that is the customer list upload. Now, before those of you who want to recruit, go and upload every realtor in the whole country to Facebook. <laughs> I always have to say this. Facebook is a little sensitive to this. They do want to know that it's le a legit customer list. So you do risk the list being rejected. Um, they want it to be people who you've actually worked with. Um, you can probably get away with smaller lists that maybe you purchased or found somewhere. They fell off a truck, right? But you do want to be careful with that because there are some terms and services around that with Facebook. They don't want you just uploading any old list. Okay, now, now let's go into some of these other options. Um, to answer Patricia's question, is it Patty? I don't know if I should call you Patty. Um, but for the Facebook page, create an audience of people who followed or interacted with your page. So it does seem, Patricia, okay. It does seem you can do that. So then you're going to choose a page here, search for it. I just broke Facebook, I think. Hopefully you guys can still hear me. Yes, you can. I think Facebook just froze on me. This is that issue I have where I have too many pages maybe, or maybe I just don't know how to use it. Here we go. I had to click one. <laughs> there we go. Let's try it again. That was completely my user error for not understanding the, the Facebook UI. I had to click on one of these. There we go. Now I have to search. But it is actually Facebook a little bit too. 
yeah. So anyway, you would choose your page. It's freezing up on me a little. Uh, and my computer is totally new and juiced up. It's actually a gaming machine. So um, it shouldn't be my computer. I think it's Facebook just going a little wonky. So I will take back my user error comment. But uh, basically, you can, Patricia, uh, go in and target people who've liked your page or who have commented, things of that nature. So just you can play with that option there. It, it's pretty should be pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but in interest in moving on, I'm just going to move past the fact that Facebook's freezing up there. Let's go click custom audience again. Uh, another one that's really exciting, and I've done a lot with this in the past, uh, is video. So if you're putting videos on Facebook, you can actually, and even if you're running videos with other ads, you can retarget people who have watched a certain percentage of that video. And this is really handy. And if you think about it, you could almost build a whole funnel inside of Facebook without anybody ever going to your website. You could have, say, three or four videos that tell a story. And then you can kind of hand those as people watch a whole video, you can then show them the second video and then the third video uh, with this technology. So not to go too far down a rabbit hole, let's just say I say, hey, anybody who's watched 50 percent, 75 or 95 percent, you know, more of my video. I want to move them onto another list and we'll call those engaged with videos. So pretty simple. And then you have to choose the videos. So you click up here and then you would choose uh, those videos here. So let's see if I can find, there we go. So it'll bring up any videos associated with your page. So let's just say anybody who's watched all of our waterfront homes video. Engaged, right? So we would just choose that. It's probably gonna tell me I need to pick more, but like that. So let's just say you do a video about uh, how to buy, how to get financing on a, your first fixer upper. It's one of my favorite examples, All right? So you do that video on Facebook um, and it's about three minutes long. And most of the people on Facebook will watch like 10 or 15 seconds and they'll keep scrolling. But let's just say 10% of those people, they watch the whole thing or they watch you know three quarters of it before they leave. Well, those are probably pretty good people to follow up with because they at least cared about that content enough to watch it for that long. So you can then show them another ad. Uh, perhaps you would show them an ad for your lender, right? So you would have your, your lender partner uh, do a video about, hey, uh, give me a call if you want fixer upper financing. And the person in the back of her head, you, you guys have experiences with Facebook too. It's like, how did they know? <laughs> how did they know I was interested in fixer upper financing, right? But, but that's kind of how. So you could show them a second video related to that thing and call them in. Uh, pull them back in. Uh, Reels, I'm not familiar. Is Reels a Facebook feature? Crystal, I may have, I, it probably does if it's a Facebook video. But you, if you are recording Reels, I just haven't heard that term. Uh, probably just me. But if you, if you ha are doing that, just check to see. Just click this video and see if it pops up. Oh, it's an Instagram thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't end up on Instagram a lot. So yeah, just try it out. Just click these. And then when you click the choose videos up here, see if it shows up. Let's see, video sources. Here you go. So if I click the video sources and I click Instagram, this is probably what you're referring to, right? So yeah, it looks like your Instagram videos, if they're called reels on Instagram, might show up there. So retargeting based on video watches. So, you know, another example would be a virtual tour of a property, I think is a really applicable thing. Say you post a, a video you created of a listing, you know, it's five minutes long, you post it to Facebook and uh, most, you don't even put an opt-in. You don't even make them come to KV Core to look at the listing or maybe they click and they do, but you don't really care if they do because anybody who watches, you know, so much of that video, you know, okay, this is a pretty engaged audience. Now I'll start to show them other ads that um, related to real estate in the area because I've kind of qualified them with that first video. You know, and then what's, what usually happens, and we kind of glanced over this, is that your retargeting videos get you a lower cost per result, cost per reaction, because it's a more primed, qualified audience. So in general, you can get a better result on that retargeting video than you would on the first one. So, so uh, yeah, so that's video. Let's click custom audience again. Uh, we kind of showed here lead form. I mentioned that a minute ago, but you can take anybody who's opened a lead form, but you can also take people who opened it, but didn't submit the form and people who opened it and submitted. So maybe 
in our case here at Forever Florida, we have our waterfront homes form. And let's just say we want to grab those people who opened the form, but they didn't submit our info, their info. So I might look for that form. It's going to be down the list here somewhere. Type waterfront. There we go. And I'll, I'll say, hey, anybody who opened but didn't submit it, I want to run an ad that tries to cap, get those people. And we'll leave it live for 20 days. They'll stay on that audience for 20 days. So I'll call it waterfront opened but didn't submit. So pretty cool, right? Um, you know, and the possibilities are endless. You can go insane trying to do all these, but I would I would start probably by just doing the basic website one and just say thank you to everybody who visits your website. We're going to get into some of the creatives around that uh, maybe today or, or going into tomorrow. But uh, just put this in the back of your head, but don't worry about doing all of these all at once. Just know that it's crazy what you can do. And I'm going to take a quick look here at the Instagram. I've never really dug into here, but everybody who's engaged with an Instagram, uh, people engage with any post, people send a message. So you can, you can retarget Instagram stuff too. So build audiences based on that. So let's see, I just want to make sure I didn't forget. Um, I will touch briefly upon, upon lookalikes. These aren't exactly retargeting, but you can actually take the retargeting audiences that you've created and you can try to find people that look like them. So, um, so we'll do a custom audience as our source. And let's just say, hey, let's find other people who look like to Facebook, the people visiting our website from day to day. Does that make sense? And then we can build a, another lookalike audience. They weren't on our site, but Facebook will let you retarget based on that custom audience. Yeah, a good question, Patricia. Yeah, uh, so the P Facebook pixel is good for Instagram because in all Instagram's advertising runs out of Facebook's dashboard since Facebook owns them. So you're gonna, you're, you'll end up getting all the benefits of the Instagram stuff too uh, on Instagram from, from that one pixel. Cool, and then special ad audiences, I don't remember. This is interesting. This would actually, I need to look into this more, but it's based on the special category. And I do wonder now that I look at this, whether this is relevant. I'm not sure it is. Um, I'll let you know if I find out more, but there's plenty here to, to start with guys to retarget. So I, I guess your homework, if there is any, might be to just go create that one audience based on your website visitors. That That's kind of the simple uh, break it down, you know, get the, the Pareto principle will get you 80% of the results maybe right now, right? 80, 20. Um, you go build, like I did in the beginning, just click website and just build a simple audience, all website visitors, retention, 90 to 180 days, and just call it all website visitors, just so you have it. Okay. And then I'm going to show you quickly, we're going to do specific creatives tomorrow. Um, but I think a lot of you watching might be wondering, well, what do I do with this audience and how does it work? So I'm just going to, really quickly not run an ad, but I'm going to walk through the Facebook ad creation um, wizard and just get to the part where we'll do that in the wrong account. There we go. So we'll click create to create a new ad. Okay, Facebook, whatever. Go to campaigns. <laughs> they got this new resource thing popping up. This oriented me. Let's click create. We'll choose an objective. Now you can choose any of these objectives. So whatever kind of ad you're doing, let's say you could show another lead form ad to people who didn't uh, opt into that lead form, right? But where you're going to get to is you're going to get to the ad set level where you set your targeting. And you're going to set the tar targeting right here where it says audience. And you're going to choose an existing custom audience. So when I click in there, you'll see all the audiences you created. And that's how you set the targeting. So you can target, target those people. So I just wanted to show you that quick to, so it wasn't too much of an open loop. Okay, just look in here. 
So uh, Sean's asking, how can I tell how many contacts are on any given campaign? Uh, in the in the audience, um, you will see, let's go back to audiences here. Facebook will give you a rough estimate of how many people have landed on the audience. Now, what's cool is you could just launch your website today, have nobody visit it, create the audience now, and then it'll gradually grow and grow. So you see over here where it says estimated audience size, size over on the right. You'll see the counts. So this is probably in this account, this is the main one we've used the most, 1,600 to 1,900. It's fairly accurate. I think we've generated about 2,000 leads from those people. So. So Patricia's asking, will we create a traffic ad to bring people to the website and create the custom audience? So that's a good point. So you could create a traffic ad that seeds your audience. So you can drive a bunch of traffic to your website and then all those people will be added to the retargeting audience. But keep in mind, let's say you're running ads on Google or you've got people coming from Zillow or you sent out a bunch of postcards and people are landing on your site. All those people, they don't have to come from Facebook. They can land on your Facebook retargeting audience. So I can run a Google ad and get somebody who's high intent, click on uh, you know, St. Petersburg, Florida homes for sale. They're actively searching for real estate in St. Petersburg. They've typed it into Google. Then they get pixeled. They get, they get added to my retargeting audience on Facebook. And then the next day they see an ad on Facebook for my business. So this is where we get into cross-channel marketing, right? You're hitting them. They came from Google and now you're using the technology to start showing them ads on another channel. And again, we've all experienced this and, and I, I'm pretty convinced uh, this is true, but you, how many of you guys have had a conversation on the phone or with a friend, right? Not on the phone, but you've had a conversation in your house and then for some reason, there you go, there's an ad serving you related to that very topic. I think I, you know, so the, the phones might be listening. I don't know why, or maybe they just know that your friend who's into the same thing you're into was in close proximity to you, right? So maybe you were added to that audience, but there's, there's lots of that stuff going on. Uh, this is our chance as kind of the little guy, the little advertiser to leverage some of this. We don't have to get that sophisticated. We can just say, hey, somebody visit our site. Let's let's touch them again on another channel. We could. So what would be the best traffic ad to run? Um, we're going to get a little bit into that tomorrow, Patricia, but uh, retargeting ad, I think the best thing you can do is a video of yourself saying, thanks for visiting my website. Here's my cell number. Just something very basic that, that introduces you and, and lets them get to know you on a more personal level. So um, the initial traffic, that, that comes down to whatever, your, whatever way you're marketing your, your real estate practice. So if, you're, if your niche is waterfront or if your niche is new construction, you're going to be running those ads. Uh, and then somebody clicks on your new construction ad. And then what we're trying to do here is retarget them with a video that of you saying, hey, thanks for visiting my website. Just want to let you know that I'm a real person or whatever. And I'm here to help you. Here's my cell number. So I think tomorrow we're going we're gonna to get into some of those specifics of the content. But for today, I just wanted to help make sure everybody understood how these audiences are created. So that's Facebook. Let's hop over to Google. And it works similarly in Google. Just switch to a more active Google account, ads account here. Okay, so yesterday we installed our scripts and we went up to this tools and settings section. And we're gonna use the same section again today. So we got our script installed. We're gonna click on tools and settings. And then we're gonna to go to audience manager right here. So it's under shared library, audience manager. And Google does things a little bit differently. Um, they will actually automatically create your audience, some of your audiences. So um, let me just see here, I'm pretty sure they do. Maybe they, they create similar ones automatically. That, that's what it is, sorry. So down here where it says similar, they'll, they'll actually kind of create lookalike audiences on Facebook and they'll say, hey, here's a list of people who look like the people who were on your other lists. So that's, that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, you'll notice here on some of these existings, you'll see there are some that say too small to serve right here. So Google actually requires you to have, I think it's a thousand people in an audience before you can explicitly show ads to them. 
for retargeting, which is a little bit of a bummer, right? <laughs> so, um, but once you get up to that amount, you can see we have a big enough audience on our main website here, and then the audience from based from Google Ads that came from Google Ads. They're big enough, and then you can start to serve. But on if we ran a Gmail campaign, we don't have a thousand people who've matched from Gmail yet. So this can take a little bit of time. So uh, yesterday's replay to answer Jeannie, that's at insiderealestate.com slash webinars. It should be the, the top one there. Uh, Dennis is asking, is that similar to YouTube ads? So uh, Google Google's ads platform allows you to run ads on YouTube. So I can go and say, hey, I've got somebody who visited from a Facebook ad. They landed on my Google audience. I'd like to now show them a video on YouTube. So yes, you, you can do that. So here's how to create the audiences. You can see the ones I have here. We're just gonna click the blue button up top. And then you'll see similar to Facebook, we have a number of options. I'm gonna run through these a little quicker because I think you guys kind of get the hang. We can do our website based one, right? Where we do visitors of a page, visitors who also visit another page, specific dates, tags, and other things. So uh, probably the main one you'll be worried about is visitors of a page. And the same way you can do page URL contains right here. And you can get a lot more sophisticated, you know, if certain events fire in your Google tag, um, you know, you can, you can do that. But I don't think many people here need to go that deep. Just, just do the page URL stuff and, and that's pretty good. Uh, you might try a referral URL, uh, you know, say you're running banner ads on, on uh, Zillow or realtor.com or third-party sites. Maybe you would say, hey, I want to create an audience for everybody who came from that specific URL. But for the most part, worry about the page URL right there. Let's go back. So you can do the website type. App users isn't too relevant. Uh, YouTube users is. So you can say, hey, I want people who viewed any video on my YouTube channel or people who subscribed to my channel, right? Or they liked my, a video. This is similar to the Facebook page thing. Well, you can add those people to an audience if you want. Which is pretty cool. And then uh, I'm pretty sure you could do that based on a video too. Let me just look here. Uh, I'm looking to see if you can do it based on a watch of a specific video. Oh yeah, viewed certain videos. There we go. So I can say, hey, anybody who views any of these videos for me, I want them to now be able on an audience so they can start to see other ads. It's pretty cool, right? Uh, again, going back to the, the idea where if you do a property tour and you drive a bunch of traffic to it on YouTube, well, now you can show those people an ad on Google uh, that offers them a list of, of homes in your area, something like that. Okay, so YouTube users, and then finally we have customer list. So you can do the same thing you did on Facebook. You can upload a list, just don't upload a list of every realtor in the country because <laughs> they're, they're the same way about it. Um, so you can build your audiences, Dennis, based on your YouTube videos when you create the retargeting audiences. But when you run Google ads, you can actually target specific videos on other people's channels and show ads on those videos as long as that advertiser has advertising enabled. Um, so yeah, so I can show you guys that really quick. There isn't much more to this. It, you know, now that you've got the Facebook spiel, uh, it's much the same here. You'll go into shared library, click audiences, click the plus, and then you can add these different common types of audiences to Google. So let me... Um, to answer your question, Dennis, about you know advertising on somebody else's page, let me show you the same way I did on Facebook how you might go about targeting one of these audiences and showing them an ad. So uh, I'll just come in here. I'll go to new campaign from the main Google page, and I can pick any of these. You know, depending on what type of ad I'm running, but let's just do a website traffic ad. Continue. We'll run it on the search network. I'm going to move through this part quick because I just want to get you to the targeting part. Uh, we do have you know, shorter training videos on running Google ads in our library of webinars and also in the next level members area. So I don't need the guide. So we set our budget. Do this here. Man, they have changed this yet again. And then I'll click more settings, click next. And then right down here, they almost hide it the way Facebook does. It's so funny. 
Um, but if you go right down here, it says audience segments. Pretty sure this is where it is now. We can now choose those audiences. And they don't make it super easy, but you can type the name of the audience is, or if I click on browse, you see right down here, it says how they have interacted with your business. And then here are the website visitor audiences I've created. So it's a little, for my money, it's a little hard to find sometimes, um, but it's in this audience segment section and you'll find it here. Now to answer your question, Dennis, about running on somebody else's um, site, you can, um, and I'm gonna stumble a little here, but it says what they are actively searching or planning. So you can actually come in here and say, hey, Google, show me everybody who's searching real estate, residential properties for sale in this market. So what they're doing is they're picking up pixel data off of their partner sites. So Zillow, Realtor, so that they think that somebody was on Zillow that maybe they will be in this audience. Um, to get more specific to your question, there is a way to target people who were on other videos, or at least there was. So I'm just trying to figure out where that is again. Not who they are, demographics. If somebody knows, let me know. But there's this type here in targeting. Hmm. Unless they've taken it away because it was too creepy. It was a bit creepy. <laughs> let me see here. Audience segments, or it's probably just in another section here. More settings. So you can definitely do these specific categories. And if I find out, I'll post it in the comments in YouTube and in next level. Um, but I definitely know that you used to be able to go and say, hey, people who liked uh, Zillow's channel, YouTube channel, for example, I want to show them an ad. And then you used to be able to drill it down by video, I'm pretty sure. And these have always been ideas that I'm like, oh, I'll get around to that someday. But really, there's so much traffic out there. It's kind of like, you know, is your time well spent trying to target just one video? Um, and I know that a lot of times I've tried these things. I don't get a ton of traffic from it. So sorry for stumbling there, guys. Um, but yes, there's some creepy, powerful targeting options with Google. And yeah, and, you, and the way that you set, uh, as you create the ad in both Facebook and Google, you're going to get to that part where you set the targeting and then you're going to choose uh, that custom audience that you've created. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there with our core content. Wow, that went pretty long. Uh, so, uh, and then we'll get to your questions now. But hopefully, everybody has kind of a good understanding of you know that second step in creating retargeting campaigns, where you've got the script installed on Monday, yesterday, and then today we we walk through all the different ways you can create audiences from the traffic you're getting uh, that are being tagged on those on those scripts on those retargeting scripts. And then tomorrow we'll get into some of the fun stuff. We'll talk about the creatives that you'll run, right? What, what are you gonna show these people? And the possibilities are endless there, but I'm probably gonna come with an example kind of video of me saying thanks to people. Um, maybe we'll do a few banner ads and things of that nature on a different networks just to kind of give you guys some inspiration tomorrow. Okay, I'm gonna scroll back up and look at some of your questions here that I may have missed. I kind of ignored the ones that weren't about this topic and we'll get back to them. Uh, so Roger's asking how to add a what's my home worth and get financing buttons uh, below landing condos. Um, so let's go. I assume you mean in this main section down here, this stuff. So the way that that is edited is from the web and IDX section. We'll go to website manager here. And then we're going to go to the site editor, I believe. It's right up here at the right. I think it was somewhere else, but click on that. And this will kind of open up this section down here, and you can start to edit what's in here. I would just be careful. It's not the easiest thing to deal with, and a lot of times you might find that you're going to switch to code view to mess with that. Uh, the other thing that you might be uh, talking about is the widgets. So you saw I was at site content, but here we have these widgets. 
So you can add these other types of widgets that are on the left. So I can add blog posts. So do I need to save? I don't know. Yeah, I had to hit add and then append. And then now I should see my blog posts under that main section. So hopefully that, that uh, answers that part of the question. And then to add testimonials, um, so let's go down here. Yeah, here's my blog post section that showed there. And then to add testimonials, wow, I forget. Uh, <laughs> let's go to website manager here. We're gonna we're gonna browse the the help desk. I'm gonna click up here testimonials. I think that search box will bring me to the help. I'll click in here. I'll type in testimonials. So how to add your agent testimonials? Wow, is that true? I wonder if only the admin can add those. And and guys, I'm sorry, I'm probably missing the answer. I get stumped here and there. Uh, but maybe support can answer that one. I'm sorry, Roger, getting a little stumped. Um, okay, Sean's asking, how about on a regular campaign in KB Core, not on Facebook? I'm not sure if I answered that. Uh, just, just ask again if I didn't get the context right. Okay, it seems like I got most of the most of these. Okay, so Dan's asking, uh, he has a website and wants to start uh, doing a ton of advertising. Do we have a big picture outline of the steps? Yeah, so the best thing we have, we have some webinars where we've um, shown specific examples. Like last week we did our open house list funnel on the webinar recording. So. I walked through creating a niche focused ad around open house lists, which you could use any niche for, not just open house list. So you could follow that process. And then I would focus in on the growth system webinar that we did last week. And that content is also in the next level members area. So uh, sorry that it's taking a minute to load here, but we did building your KV core based real estate growth system. I'll pop it in the chat. Um, this kind of lays out the framework for the flow and then tutorials about specific ad networks can be found on in the next level members area in the growth system section. Um, to fully answer that question, you know, it, it really depends on what your business is about, what you're doing, you know? So if you have a niche, then that's gonna dictate the content. Um, if you're just looking to kind of get started with paid traffic, I would start with a Google ad and then retarget on Facebook. So you do a simple Google ad that's, you know, list of new construction homes or something in your area. Like our new construction ad here, I'll show you guys. Like this, and then just drive that straight to a squeeze link or landing page on KV Core. And then maybe do some of the things I talk, we're talking about this week where you would take all those visitors and retarget on Facebook. But uh, this is, this is, not stuff you build all at once, you know, you, you do kind of a piece at a time. And I've always found that it's best to think about it in terms of the niches, either the property type or the buyer type or seller type that you're going after and then building the campaign from there. So all of that is laid out uh, in the next level members area. For those of you guys who aren't members, you can get a seven day trial. It's in marketplace under coaching here right here to Next Level Mastermind. And then once you come inside, I've kind of got this menu here, but the growth system stuff is right here. It's kind of the best place to start, I think. And then within that, we have tutorials about Facebook, Google, and different channels. Okay, I don't see any other questions. Um, 
Uh, Patricia's asking for SEO and email deliverability. It doesn't matter if our KV core uh, URL is not direct, but a forward. No, that's fine. Um, a for email, it's fine if it's a forward. Uh, for SEO, you're not going to get much benefit from a forward. So S the way SEO works is kind of Google is crawling things that are on that actual domain and adding it to its database. So if you want something, if you want SEO credit, you're going to want to use the domain that the content lives on. Uh, Gene's asking, are these videos a little behind? Uh, there should be a delay for sure. Um, but it's probably like a 10 second delay. But if you mean, are some of the videos dated, like older? We do have videos that run back like five, six, seven years. So, uh, but, but the way that the playlist is, you know, our main playlist of recordings, those are in chronological order. This one that I always show, the insightrealestate.com slash webinars. So, you know, I always say, I think most of what you'll find, even going back five years, is still relevant. It's just some of the things in the videos will be in different places in the dashboards, but the actual strategy and the flows of everything we're doing should be pretty unchanged. <laughs> no problem, Dennis. Yeah. I'm not trying to make everybody's head spin too much, but um, this is definitely one of those areas. Again, you know, it falls under what can I do to increase conversions? And this is one of the, you know, there's a lot of leverage here because you, you can set up a retargeting campaign once more or less and just kind of let it run. Uh, and for, you know, once you know how to do it for 20 minutes of effort, you've added this kind of automated salesperson to your team. Right? Oh, it's probably you, but you've added a video of yourself introducing yourself, for example. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. Um, and you don't have to do any extra work to get that extra touch in. You know, so yeah, it's cool stuff. Uh, how long would you run these ads? Uh, that depends on the ad, Patricia. So I have, you know, you can run this, let the same ad run forever. You know, one thing you guys might not have caught so much is that that duration of time in the audience, as we set up the audiences, uh, you notice some of them, you can say, hey, I only want the person to be in my audience for seven days. So they don't keep seeing the ad. They drop out of the audience after seven days. So if somebody just visited my website for the first time, they're not going to see the same video of me welcoming them and thanking them for visiting my website. So you can leave that same ad running forever and know that it's only targeting the relevant people. That's, that's what's really cool. Sure, Crystal, uh, yesterday's video, it's on this link. I'll just give it to everybody. Just bookmark this playlist right here. And that'll give you yesterday's. It, it was right here. I got to put my green thumbnail on there. And then today's replay will be in the same spot. And I'll just go on top of that. Okay, guys, I think we're good for today. Hopefully you're finding this useful. Um, I've done this whole retargeting thing in one hour in the past, and I think it can be a little fast and overwhelming. So it's been fun to break it down like this to the different components. Uh, probably have more videos to watch, but I'm hoping that this is an effective way to kind of give you guys an understanding. And you don't have to stress about doing all this. Just understand that it's out there and it can work. You know, you can always hire somebody to do this for you. Uh, you can use the marketplace options. We do have our Google display retargeting. I can just type retargeting in. There are some done for you options in there too. So. Okay, guys, uh, we'll see. I'll see you tomorrow at the same time, and we'll we'll get into some of the ad creatives around uh, retargeting. All right, have a good day.